Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook where we <clears throat> amuse each other and we inform each other and we connect with each other and we have a good time checking out the latest headlines from our city, our state, and our country and our latest questions, ideas, and suggestions about how to have an awesome time here in Puerto Vallarta as a community of English-speaking locals, which also include those of you who are far away but are very close to Puerto Vallarta in your hearts. It is always a pleasure to read you and to welcome you into this space. And if you're watching on YouTube later on in the day, um, well, you don't get to comment, you don't get to watch us live, but you're still part of the cluster, and we very much appreciate that. Today is Wednesday. It is August 17, and as usual, we have a nice selection of news. We have fun news. We have stinky news. <laughs> we have doggy news. We have Oh, my God, we have such a mindless diversion for you to consider if you want to amuse yourselves or your children or your grandchildren. What do I know? And uh, we also have information about a couple of upcoming events that you might be interested in. But first... <clears throat> uh, as always, we welcome those of you who are joining us live for the first time to uh, let us know if you want to. Just type the word new in your comment, and we'll be so very happy to give you a nice little lovely welcome. And if you are uh, concerned about something that is really important to you, or you want to get a reaction, or you want everybody to find out about something, um, ba -dum, bum 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 all you have to do is put a capital letter Q at the beginning of your question, such as Craig, who has a very important question. Has the invite for tomorrow's members only show been sent out? The answer is no, Craig. I am giving it. I'm waiting until to, until this afternoon to give time to any new members to to join. But I am going to include it on the show notes today, in fact, so that people can see it. We're, and we're going to include it in the show notes for tomorrow as well. And all you have to do is click on it. If you didn't receive the email or if it went to your spam folder, um, you just click on it and log in to, uh, to buy me a coffee and you should be able to look at the notice without a problem. So that's what we have. And uh, boom, bum, bum, boom. I think it's time to get started. This, I didn't know about this before. I don't know if this has happened in the past, but quite honestly, I haven't been paying attention. We usually associate patron saint fiestas with small towns in the middle of nowhere and things like that. Although several colonias in Puerto Vallarta have their own patron saint fiestas. And now we learn that Marina Vallarta uh, will have their own patron saint fiestas at the Templo de Maria de la Paz or the Our Lady of Peace Temple in Marina Vallarta. They will take place between August 20 and August 22. It will be a cultural event, 
a religious event, a popular event with food and vendors and so forth and so on. Uh, this would this will be a Saturday to a Monday. There will be a ballet performance on, on that Saturday, then a string orchestra on Sunday, and a Latin group performing on Monday. No fireworks, of course, because nobody wants to put the nearby crocodiles in a foul mood. But if you are... Um, if you are in Marina Vallarta and you would like to attend this, this should be a fun fiesta. And if you're not in Marina Vallarta, hey, why not? Let's go check it out. I think uh, given the fact that this is happening in uh, Marina Vallarta, which is a, a, a not as much of a popular uh, as in like locals living there, I should. I th it will be a fancy patron saint fiesta. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so there you have it. This will be at uh, the Templo de Maria de la Paz between August 20 and August 22nd. Ah, we also learned that Seapal concluded improvement on a new pipeline in Colonia Versalles that takes advantage of the phreatic water level in some parts of the Colonia. Now, if you recall, and if I recall, phreatic water or phreatic water lines. I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly. It's just water that lingers under the earth and it's part of the natural process of, um, of geology. You know, there's just water mantles, I think they're called. So I'm certainly no expert. I have no idea what, um, what uh, CEPAL does to acquire that water somehow and make it go through pipes. And these pipes take it to a pumping and cleaning station. And this reinforces the availability of clean water for the region. So that's what phreatic water is in my very pedestrian explanation. But water moving inexplicably for, from one place to another is not the only thing water can do. Well, water does that, but it doesn't always smell good. That's what I'm trying to say. On the other hand, Jorge Carvajal Diaz, uh, uh, who leads Canirac, which is the local restaurant association, has received reports from some of the restaurant members, or the member restaurants, rather, that um, restaurants in Olas Altas and also in Versalles are being surprised by, by sewage water that pops up in the restaurant's uh, water lines uh, because some sewer pipes have collapsed due to trash accumulation and also due to the work that Zepal is presently doing. And this usually um, increases when it rains. I'm not sharing this to make us feel, ew, we don't want to go to those restaurants, but I'm hoping that the restaurants have this under control and that they are in close coordination with Zepal and other authorities uh, whenever it rains. It's so, ugh. but that's what it is. What can I tell you? Um, let's, uh, uh, aquifer says Clayton King. Interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm an ignoramus when it comes to where water comes from and where water goes. All I know is, as I said yesterday, I think it's a good thing that Seapal seems to be on top of things more so than in the past and doing a lot of uh, work throughout the city. But enough about that. Let's see what kind of falling from the sky water we can expect for the next few days. You must break through the fog of lies TV weathermen have created around you. Ooh, that's what snarky weather has to say today. Uh, what are we concerned of? We are concerned of the fact that we are enjoying 27 degrees. Humidity is only, only 83%, and we are enjoying 81 degrees Fahrenheit of temperature right now. Uh, let's see. What did I just do? I have not been able to. Ah, there you go. Weather forecast says uh, we, were, we will have rain and humidity through the day with a high of 30 and a low of 24. Tomorrow, Thursday, uh, possible light rain in the evening with a high of 31 and a low of 24. And then Friday, we can expect rain in the evening and overnight with a high of 31 and a low of 25. So it gets a little bit warmer as we approach the weekend. Now, just one more about the weather because we are in that frame of mind right now. Local meteorologist Victor Manuel Cornejo, who is part of the science committee for the local civil protection agency, tells us something we already know, which is that it's been raining a lot more 
than it had been in the past few weeks, which is lovely. The atmosphere continues to be very active all over the country due to uh, tropical storms that don't quite turn into hurricanes, or when they do, they're already far out away in the Pacific Ocean to not be uh, very consequential damage uh, to not bring very consequential damage to us. But, of course, they still bring a lot of rain. And this is good. This is a good thing. Uh, moving right along, we reported yesterday on the inauguration of the lighthouse on the Malecon. But I happened to find this photograph today, which I think is a lot more interesting than the one we featured yesterday. Now, the lighthouse on the Malecon was... Uh, installed and inaugurated on 1932, but this uh, photograph from 1935 shows us how the lighthouse, the itty bitty lighthouse on the Malecon was actually the tallest structure at the time this photo was taken during an Independence Day parade. And you can see uh, there's the, there's this, there's the lighthouse and there was absolutely nothing. All that you could find was small casitas next to one another. Um, not that different than what we see, for example, in San Sebastián del Oeste nowadays. So I just wanted to share that photo because I thought, I thought it was really awesome. This next thing I might as well demonstrate because it'll be a lot more fun than to explain it. And this is the mindless amusement that I told you I would show you. I am here at, let me put it on my screen because it's blocked by other things. I am here at Google, google.com. I've typed google.com. And this is, of course, a place where we search for things. So if I go into the search window and I search one word, it can be cat, dog, perro, gato, which is uh, dog and cat in Spanish. And I'm sure it works for other languages, but I'm going to share for cat because I can. And I get my usual explanations, but the, check it out. I get a little animated thing down here and I'm going to click on it. And, and this is what happens. <laughs> And this is this is so cute. All we get is cats and paws. And of course, you cannot actually do anything until you click out of the game, which you do by clicking on this button down here. But in the meantime, you can just plaster your screen with cat and dog paws. Um, it works exactly the same uh, with with the word dog. Why I would share this mindless uh diversion well because i love mindless diversions what can i say i was really happy looking at this this morning and i spent a lot of time <laughs> clicking what can i tell you i'm a simple guy <laughs> okay moving right along <clears throat> let's see where is it yes speaking of cats and dogs there are um a few events that you may want to be aware of as long as we're talking about canine circumstances. Uh, apparently, there is an adoption day at Rufi's Canine Cantina, which is located uh, on Emiliano Zapata. This is going to be tomorrow from 3 to 6.30. It's going to be an adoption day. If you are looking to adopt a little pooch, you can do that. And if you happen to be located in uh, Bahia de Banderas, uh, there's going to be a canine festival at Plaza Dorada, which is located in Jarretaderas, where you can adopt a doggy by exchanging the doggy for bags of dry food for cats or dogs. And I thought you should know that. Uh, this next one, of course, I saw crocheted flowers and I figured, OK, that's that's my turf. I can do this. And, you know, sometimes I wish event providers were a little bit more generous with their explanation. And this just says Expo at Parque Parota. And this is going to, and we know Parque Parota is at Puerto de Luna, right on the, right in the hotel zone, uh, next to the main road to Fluvial. And it, it is organized by a person that does crochet things. The sad thing about these announcements 
and how nice it would be if the organizers would help themselves more by helping us learn more details about what they're doing. For example, it's uh, not, it doesn't indicate how many people are going to be exhibiting their work or what, what else is going to be happening there. But I don't want to make this into a gripe. I'm going to encourage anyone that is curious enough to go to these things um, to actually attend. So at the very least, you're going to be able to find crocheted flowers. And, um, and this, again, will be not this Saturday, but next Saturday, August 27, at 2 p.m. at Parque Parota. And the last announcement is our friends of Hecho a Mano, or Handmade, PV, uh, are, are, have been very successful with their expos. They are, they've done like three, I think, and they're switching venues for the next one. The next one is going to be a Captain Don's, which I think is in Cinco de Diciembre, uh, Sunday, August 28th. That would be the following day from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m., an opportunity to, um, to buy crafts made by lo local people. And if you have been following their Facebook page, I have, you will have noticed that they have been very generous in showing photographs of all the people that are now increasingly joining this project. So it's good to see. Again, some people are more generous of information on Facebook events than others. It would be so nice if uh, event organizers would be aware of how important it is to provide us with complete thorough information that paints a clearer picture of what we can expect at these events and hopefully that will continue to be the case moving forward uh and now let's turn to your comments and see what you guys are up to i love your good mornings as always doug is in cincinnati uh timothy is in los angeles uh lovely Sherry, I conversed with Sherry this morning. And again, Sherry, I'm going to be sending that uh, mailing for tomorrow's private broadcast for members only, uh, where we're going to look at all those old photographs that I've been previewing in the past couple of days and many more things. I'll send that out this afternoon. I'll keep an eye on you to make sure that you get your email. Let's see what else we have. Oh, coughing time. Thank you. New Jersey's in the house, says Ricky. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, let's see. Ooh, Ramona's back in town. Good for you. Let's see, let's see. I answered that question, but that was from Craig. Uh, let's see. Ba -dee -ba -boom -ba -ba. New, a new person. Hello, Debbie Brazali. I hope I'm saying that well. Uh, first time being able to tune into the live show. Welcome, Debbie. Everybody, please say welcome to Debbie. And uh, yes, applause. Let's have an applause. Debbie is joining us live. I hope you have a good time. If there's anything on your mind, Debbie, we are here to connect when we can, of course. Uh, let's see. Another question. Jonathan asks, any information about the Vidanta cruise ship to Mazatlan? Well, you know, I it's not like I'm waking up every morning and looking for the information, but I have been very intrigued about this myself, Jonathan, and I have not seen anything new. What we are seeing, though, is a lot of conversation about all these uh, peer improvements, not only the one in Boca del Domatlan, but we've also announced recently that our maritime terminal is going to expand, I don't know exactly when, to be able to allow for increasing number of boats, including the one that goes, that will go from Puerto Vallarta to the Islas Marias. Now, the Vidanta cruise ship would probably be too large for these new piers, but no, there's no information about what Vidanta is doing. The last thing we connected was that Vidanta was primarily promoting the journey as a perk or an option for people that are actually staying at the Vidanta Resort. So mere mortals like myself cannot go to a ticket booth and say, I want to do this, how much is it? Uh, and, and I certainly have not seen any information published anywhere about how much it costs for a mere mortal like myself to be able to attend. Uh, but I'll keep my eye on it. 
Let's see what else we have. Karen asks, does Diaz Ordaz or Versalles or Lavena have a patron saint? You know, if if we do, well, we have to because pretty much every church has a patron saint. That's pretty much a given. I live one block away from a church and, you know, I don't pay much attention to these things generally because I'm not thinking about patron saint fiestas here in the city. I want to go to little towns, but when those fiestas are, if you are asking because you're curious about a fiesta, I've never seen anything published in any one of the neighborhoods. But it would be as simple as walking to any of the churches in uh, Diaz Ordaz, Versalles, or La Vena and just asking the church people, hey, do you guys have a patron saint? What is the patron saint? And do you have a party? And when will that take place? Um so that's a long answer, but that's what I know. Question or comment. Santa Barbara, California at Puerto Vallarta are celebrating this year 50 years of being sister city. Ceremonies will end on November. Almost 100 folks are coming from Santa Barbara. Hola, Paco. You can come to some of the events. Oh, that is so much fun. Thank you very much, Susie. I, I don't get invited to these things. Not that I expect to, but my best wish if you are involved in these committees or if you know the people, is that that they spread the word, that they spread the word, that they rely on things like Google event, I mean Facebook events, or send out press releases so that people that are in the business of connecting, like I am, can connect the information with those that are interested. But yes, please keep me posted, Susie. If there's something that I can attend, I would love to to check it out. Uh, thank you for your comments on the old photograph. They are absolutely wonderful. Um, and they are difficult to find the really good ones, but they are beautiful. Um, let's see. Uh, David says, I think that would amuse me for hours after a special brownie. Oh, I know that works well. <laughs> I, I know that works well because I actually found out about this last night. And last night I was just having a lot of fun with having ingested my brownie. <laughs> That's what we do. Let's see what else we have. There's another cue. Oh, interesting. I hope to be part of the Santa Barbara delegation, even though I live in San Diego. I have come a few times with Santa Barbara, very involved with sister cities, San Diego and Perth. Western Australia. Well, Susie, I will be eternally grateful if you keep us in the loop. If you have access to information, it would be such a pleasure to share it with those interested. Let's see. Lots of welcomes for Debbie. Thank you very much for being so supportive, Cluster. I appreciate that. And I'm sure you're helping Debbie feel at home. Marsha says, I like the show better when you talk more about little things like the Google Cat item and not just food and restaurants, more intimate, like talking with friends about each other. You know, Marsha, I so much appreciate your comment. From where I sit, <clears throat> oh, my goodness, from where I sit, my first instant reaction is to, of course, look for things that I might be interested in. But then based on the ongoing feedback that I get from you, um, I've included things like pet stuff and mundane stuff. So I am very grateful for the feedback. And if anybody else, and we've said this before, we'll say it as many times as necessary. If anybody else would like to see other types of things uh, that are hopefully within my area of interests, um, I, I will be so very happy to continue to feature them. Thank you for that. Uh, oh, and by the way, I stayed up late last night. Speaking of mundane and other things, I stayed up late as, late at night watching the new Artemis rocket be moved from the assembling building to where it's going to actually take off in just a few days. We're going back to the moon, and I know I'm being very, very geeky. Kathy asks, have you ever visited the PER project? Kathy, I have and I love it out there. Way, 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 way back when I was working at Bayer Lifestyles, 
the per project used to be associated with Superior Tours Vallarta. I don't know if there's a link there anymore, but you used to be able to catch a van, I think at uh, Sam's, at that parking lot, you used to be able to catch a van that would take people to experience the cat farm or the cat sanctuary that a per project used to maintain um, in, in Bahia de Banderas. I don't know if this is still happening, but uh, the short answer is yes, I have visited. It is beautiful. And if the PER project is still doing visits or anything, we would love to find out more about that in case anybody is associated with the PER project and is watching right now. Uh, Dave says, Vidanta Cruz is muy expensive. I don't know that as a fact, but uh, I would not be surprised. Would not be surprised at all. Uh, Debbie but Debbie says, Debbie Brazale says, thank you for the welcome, everyone. Great pronunciation on my last name. Thank you. I always struggle. I'm always fascinated by strange and unusual uh, last names, and your last name is strange and unusual to me, and I'm always afraid to offend by butchering them in the mouth part of the adventure. And this, my friends, this is what we have for today. Uh, as always, thank you very much. Uh, for all your comments and your suggestions and thank you very much for keeping me company and thank you very much for keeping us Luna and I uh, able to to continue providing entertainment and information and connection thanks to your contributions and your memberships again the schedule of activities today will be to um, program and schedule the live broadcast for tomorrow afternoon so that we can add it to the show notes. So do expect an email from buy me a coffee uh, sometime within the next hour. If you don't get it, please send me a message so that I can give you the link um, after I verify your membership status and uh, because we want everybody to be able to join, everybody that is a member. And if you're not a member, consider being a member. Um, you'll make me happy. <laughs> what can I tell you? And you'll keep us um, you keep us going, which is a good thing too. Have a good day and I'll see you again tomorrow.